Padre Pio, the beloved spiritual figure known to the world, was born Francesco Forgione in the picturesque Italian countryside in 1887. A man of profound faith and extraordinary charisma, he dedicated his life to serving God as a member of the Capuchin religious order. Widely revered and affectionately called Padre Pio, meaning pious father, he became a beacon of hope and solace for millions. His enduring legacy as a mystic, stigmatist, and confessor has solidified his place in the hearts of countless devotees, and his canonization by the Catholic Church is a testament to his profound impact on the world. During his lifetime, Padre Pio, one of the most revered mystics of the 20th century, made numerous predictions, many of which were documented by those who followed him closely, while others were passed down through oral tradition. Among these prophecies, one of the most intriguing and widely discussed is his prediction of the three days of darkness. This prophecy has sparked significant interest and speculation among believers, theologians, and scholars alike. It foretells a period of intense darkness that will envelop the earth, during which cataclysmic events will unfold, leading to the purification of the world. This expanded analysis delves into the details of Padre Pio's prophecy, exploring its theological implications, historical context, and the broader impact it has had on the faithful. Now, let's delve into his foretell first. According to the prophecy attributed to Padre Pio, the earth will experience three days and nights of utter darkness, during which time the only source of light will be candles made of beeswax that have been specially blessed. During this period, all forms of artificial light will fail, plunging the world into a state of profound blackness. This darkness is not merely a physical phenomenon, but is also symbolic, representing the spiritual state of humanity, a world plunged into sin and away from the light of God. The prophecy details that during these three days, the earth will be subjected to a series of cataclysmic events that echo the ten plagues of Egypt, specifically the ninth plague, where darkness covered the land. Padre Pio warned that these days of darkness would mark the end of those who opposed the church, signaling divine retribution against the forces of evil. The intensity of this prophecy lies in its vivid description of the horrors that will accompany the darkness. Hurricanes, firestorms, severe weather, lightning, and earthquakes, all of which will wreak havoc across the globe. The prophecy of the three days of darkness carries deep theological implications, particularly within the context of Catholic eschatology, which deals with the study of the end times and the ultimate destiny of humanity. In Christian theology, darkness often symbolizes sin, evil, and the absence of God's presence. The concept of three days of darkness can be seen as a period of divine judgment, where the world is cleansed of its sins in preparation for a renewed era of peace and holiness. Padre Pio's prophecy echoes themes found in apocalyptic literature, such as the Book of Revelation, which describes the trials and tribulations that will precede the second coming of Christ. The prophecy can also be interpreted as a call to repentance, urging believers to purify their hearts, seek forgiveness, and return to a life of faith before it is too late. The emphasis on spiritual preparation, such as praying the rosary, reading spiritual books, and seeking spiritual communion, underscores the belief that the faithful must be spiritually vigilant and ready for any trials that may come. Getting back to the spiritual figure's profile, Padre Pio, originally named Francesco Forgione, was born on May 25, 1887, in the small rural town of Pietrelcina, located in the southern region of Italy. Pietrelcina, nestled in the province of Benevento, was a community steeped in the traditions of agriculture, with most of its inhabitants, including Francesco's family, working as farmers. The Forgione family was of modest means, living a simple, devout life centered around their Catholic faith. Francesco's parents, 
Grazio and Maria Giuseppa Forgione, were deeply religious, instilling in their children the values of piety, hard work, and a strong devotion to God. These values would profoundly influence Francesco's spiritual development. From an early age, Francesco demonstrated an unusual inclination towards spirituality. Unlike other children, who were often preoccupied with games and mischief, young Francesco was drawn to prayer and the rituals of the church. He would often retreat to quiet corners of his home or the local church to pray, displaying a maturity and seriousness far beyond his years. His parents, recognizing his spiritual sensitivity, supported his religious activities, encouraging him to pursue his faith. This early immersion in the spiritual life would lay the foundation for his future vocation. Francesco's deep religious fervor was also marked by mystical experiences that he reportedly began to have as a child. He described having visions of Jesus, the Virgin Mary, and his guardian angel, which both comforted and sometimes frightened him. These experiences were not something he shared widely, as he feared others would not understand or might dismiss them as the imaginings of a young boy. However, they were significant in shaping his understanding of the divine and deepening his commitment to a life dedicated to God. The path to religious life became clearer as Francesco grew older. By the time he reached adolescence, it was evident to both him and his family that he was called to a life of service within the church. His desire to become a priest intensified, and he began to express a strong interest in joining a religious order. However, this path was not without its challenges. Francesco's family, though devout, was poor, and the cost of education was a significant burden. Despite these financial hardships, his parents were determined to support their son's calling. Grazio, his father, made the difficult decision to emigrate to the United States to work and send money back home, ensuring that Francesco could pursue his religious education. In 1903, at the age of 15, Francesco took the first formal step towards his religious vocation by entering the novitiate of the Capuchin Friars in Morcone, a town near Pietrelcina. The Capuchin Order, a branch of the Franciscan family, was known for its strict adherence to poverty, simplicity, and a life of prayer and penance. The Order's ideals resonated deeply with Francesco, who admired the life of St. Francis of Assisi and sought to emulate his humility and devotion. Upon entering the Order, he was given the religious name Pio, in honor of Pope Pius III, an early Christian martyr. The name was a fitting choice, reflecting the young novice's piety and the life of sacrifice he was about to undertake. Life in the Capuchin novitiate was rigorous and demanding. The daily routine was structured around prayer, meditation, study, and manual labor. The friars lived in austere conditions, embracing poverty as a means of spiritual purification. For the young Padre Pio, this lifestyle was both a challenge and a source of immense spiritual fulfillment. He immersed himself in the discipline of the order, finding joy in the simplicity and hardships that came with it. The novitiate also marked the beginning of his formal theological education, where he studied Latin, philosophy, and theology, subjects that would prepare him for the priesthood. During these early years, Padre Pio's health began to deteriorate, a condition that would persist throughout his life. He suffered from various illnesses, including severe gastrointestinal problems and respiratory issues, which often left him bedridden. Despite these physical challenges, Padre Pio remained steadfast in his spiritual duties. His superiors noted his exceptional dedication to prayer and his deep sense of the divine, even as he battled his ailments. These early trials were seen by some as a sign of his spiritual strength, as he bore his suffering with remarkable patience and acceptance, offering it up as a form of penance. Padre Pio's time in the novitiate 
was also marked by intense spiritual experiences, some of which were difficult for him to understand or cope with. He reported being attacked by demonic forces, a theme that would recur throughout his life. These spiritual battles, while terrifying, seemed to strengthen his resolve and deepen his reliance on God. The young friar also experienced profound moments of divine consolation, where he felt the presence of God in a tangible and comforting way. These mystical experiences, though not widely known at the time, would later become a significant part of his spiritual legacy. In 1904, after completing his novitiate, Padre Pio took his first vows as a Capuchin friar, committing himself to the evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity, and obedience. This was a momentous occasion, marking his full entry into the life of the order. He continued his studies and spiritual formation, progressing toward the priesthood with unwavering commitment. Despite ongoing health issues, he remained determined to fulfill his calling trusting that God would provide him with the strength needed to overcome his physical limitations. In 1918, Padre Pio experienced one of the most profound and mysterious phenomena of Christian mysticism, the stigmata. This extraordinary event, where wounds mirroring those of Jesus Christ's crucifixion appeared on his body, would not only define Padre Pio's life and legacy, but also become a focal point of both veneration and controversy within the Catholic Church and beyond. The stigmata appeared on Padre Pio's body on September 20th, 1918, while he was deep in prayer in the small, dimly lit church of the Monastery of San Giovanni Rotondo. The wounds appeared on his hands, feet, and side, the same places where Jesus was wounded during the crucifixion. These wounds were not mere surface abrasions. They were deep, bleeding, and caused Padre Pio considerable physical pain. According to his accounts, the experience was preceded by a vision of a mysterious figure who pierced him with a lance, leaving him with these marks. For Padre Pio, the stigmata was a source of both spiritual exaltation and deep suffering. He viewed the wounds as a gift from God a way to share in the passion of Christ and to suffer for the redemption of souls. However, the physical pain was immense, and the wounds were a constant reminder of the sacrifice he believed he was called to make. Despite the agony, Padre Pio accepted the stigmata with humility, seeing it as a divine mandate to bear witness to Christ's suffering. The news of Padre Pio's stigmata spread rapidly, first among the local community and then across Italy. Pilgrims began flocking to San Giovanni Rotondo, eager to see the friar who bore the wounds of Christ and to receive his blessing. As the phenomenon gained attention, it inevitably drew the scrutiny of the Catholic Church, which has historically approached claims of supernatural phenomena with caution and skepticism. The Church initiated an official investigation into the stigmata to determine its authenticity and origin. This investigation was carried out by medical professionals as well as ecclesiastical authorities. Over the years, Padre Pio underwent numerous medical examinations, during which doctors documented the wounds, analyzed their characteristics, and tried to ascertain whether they could be explained by natural causes. Some medical professionals were baffled by the stigmata, noting that the wounds neither healed nor became infected, which defied the typical behavior of such injuries. Others were more skeptical, suggesting that the wounds could be self-inflicted or psychosomatic, physical manifestations of intense religious fervor or psychological distress. The Church's investigators, while thorough, were also divided. Some believed that the stigmata were genuine and a sign of divine favor, while others remained unconvinced, cautious of endorsing what they feared could become a sensationalized or misunderstood phenomenon. Despite these doubts, the investigation did not find conclusive evidence to discredit the stigmata, and Padre Pio continued to bear the wounds for the rest of his life. 
Throughout the process, he remained obedient to the church, submitting to the examinations and restrictions placed upon him without complaint. His humility and willingness to endure both the physical pain and the scrutiny of the church only served to enhance his reputation among the faithful. Padre Pio's journey to the priesthood culminated in 1910 when, at the age of 23, he was ordained a priest. The ordination took place in the Cathedral of Benevento, a significant moment not only for him but also for his family and community who had supported him through years of hardship and sacrifice. As a newly ordained priest, Padre Pio was now fully equipped to serve the church, offering the sacraments and guiding the faithful in their spiritual journeys. His ordination was the beginning of a life that would be marked by extraordinary spiritual phenomena, intense suffering, and a deep connection with the divine. In these early years of ministry, Padre Pio began to attract the attention of both the faithful and the curious. His humility, coupled with his growing reputation for holiness, made him a figure of quiet authority within the Capuchin order. However, it was his experiences of suffering, both physical and spiritual, that truly defined this period of his life, preparing him for the extraordinary role he would later play in the church and in the lives of countless individuals seeking spiritual guidance and healing. Moreover, the prophecy highlights the protective role of the Virgin Mary, who is often invoked as a guide and protector in times of trouble. Padre Pio's instruction to seek the Virgin Mary's protection during the days of darkness reflects the deep Marian devotion within Catholicism, where Mary is seen as a powerful intercessor who can shield the faithful from harm. This aspect of the prophecy reinforces the importance of Marian devotion in Catholic spirituality, particularly in times of crisis. The prophecy of the three days of darkness is not unique to Padre Pio. It has roots in Catholic mysticism and has been attributed to several saints and mystics throughout history. Similar prophecies have been made by figures such as Saint Anna Maria Taigi, Blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora, and Marie-Julie Jeheny, all of whom described a period of darkness as a divine chastisement for the sins of the world. The recurrence of this theme in Catholic prophecy suggests a broader cultural and theological concern with the state of the world and the need for divine intervention. During periods of social, political, and moral upheaval, such prophecies often gain traction, resonating with the anxieties of the faithful. In the early 20th century, when Padre Pio lived, the world was experiencing significant turmoil, including two world wars, economic depression, and the rise of ideologies that challenged traditional religious values. In this context, the prophecy of the three days of darkness can be seen as a response to the pervasive sense of crisis and the need for spiritual renewal. Padre Pio's own life was marked by a deep awareness of the spiritual battles between good and evil, a theme that permeates his teachings and prophecies. His stigmata, intense prayer life, and frequent mystical experiences positioned him as a spiritual warrior in the eyes of his followers, someone who was attuned to the divine and capable of foreseeing future events. The prophecy of the three days of darkness thus fits within the broader narrative of Padre Pio's mission to call the world to repentance and to prepare for the trials that would precede the coming of God's kingdom. In addition to foretelling the events of the three days of darkness, Padre Pio provided specific guidance on how the faithful should prepare and respond when these events begin to unfold. He advised people to cover their windows stay indoors, and avoid looking outside during the days of darkness, emphasizing the importance of taking God's wrath seriously. The instruction to pray the rosary, read spiritual books, and seek spiritual communion reflects the need for the faithful to remain focused on their relationship with God and to find strength in prayer during times of trial. 
Padre Pio also warned of the dangers posed by the natural elements during the days of darkness, particularly the spread of poisonous gases by the wind. His warning against looking outside during the earthquake underscores the idea that this period will be marked by divine wrath, and those who do not heed the warnings may face immediate death. This advice can be seen as both a practical and spiritual directive, urging believers to take shelter not only physically, but also spiritually, by turning to God and seeking His protection. The recommendation to stock up on food and prepare for disturbances in nature, such as firestorms, suggests that the prophecy was also meant to be taken literally. Padre Pio's emphasis on physical preparedness highlights the tangible reality of the events he foresaw and the need for the faithful to be ready for any eventuality. This blend of practical and spiritual advice reflects the holistic nature of Padre Pio's teachings, which addressed both the physical and spiritual needs of his followers. The prophecy of the three days of darkness has had a significant impact on the Catholic faithful, particularly among those who are devoted to Padre Pio. For many, the prophecy serves as a powerful reminder of the need for spiritual vigilance and the importance of living a life in accordance with God's will. It has inspired a deep sense of urgency among believers to prepare for the end times and to seek the protection of the Virgin Mary and the sacraments. For others, the prophecy has fueled apocalyptic expectations and a focus on the signs of the times, leading to a heightened awareness of global events and their potential significance in the context of divine prophecy. This has led some to view natural disasters, political upheavals, and other crises as possible precursors to the fulfillment of the prophecy. The prophecy has also contributed to the popularity of devotional practices associated with Padre Pio, such as the use of blessed beeswax candles and the praying of the rosary, particularly in times of crisis. These practices have become symbols of spiritual preparedness and trust in divine protection, reinforcing the message of the prophecy and its relevance to the lives of believers. Padre Pio's prophecy of the three days of darkness is a powerful and evocative vision of divine judgment and purification. It reflects deep theological themes of sin, redemption, and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. The prophecy has resonated with the faithful for its vivid imagery and its call to spiritual readiness, serving as both a warning and a source of hope. While the prophecy remains a subject of debate and interpretation, its impact on Catholic spirituality is undeniable, inspiring countless believers to deepen their faith, seek God's protection, and prepare for whatever trials may come.